Hey guys, welcome back to We Watched a Movie. I am Mike, and this is a spoiler-free review of Smile 2, a movie that I hated. You're not going to like... I mostly hated. You're not going to like my opinion about this movie, so let me just get that out of the way right now. A lot of you are not going to like things that are about to come out of my mouth, and that's all right. You don't have to disagree with me at all. And I'm not saying you're a big, dumb, idiot fart head if you enjoyed this movie. I think it's awesome that you enjoyed it, and understand that I'm clearly in the minority. And here's why. Look, I love the first Smile movie. I enjoyed it a lot. I think that it walked this cool line between like Friday night pop bubblegum horror movie for like high school kids with also some serious croissant type of horror themes in it. So I thought that was I thought it was a cool movie in that way. And I really love the creature effects at the end and all that stuff. So I like Smile. I was looking forward to this one. I like the idea of let's do it with a pop star and just change up the story and make it weird. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. I did see the second trailer and see, oh my God, this looks like it's going to Silly Town and we're definitely, and the trailer does, by the way, if you can avoid the second trailer, avoid it like it's your parents on report card day. I mean that, well, from in my experience, at least, maybe you're, maybe it was a happy date for you. I don't know. I love the opening. I love it where we picked up with this one all the way up to the title drop. What a great job. I can't say anything about why or what happened because it just gives stuff away for sure. But man, I wish we would have stayed with this kind of idea. It was so cool. And I'm going to say there's like a Jason Bourne aspect to it in a weird way, which is not what I expected. But the film work there is so good. The idea is so fun and crazy. There's a little, there's a couple things they do with the script, and this this happens later in the film as well, where it just kind of dumbs it down, and there's like just some script issues, like a character is doing something, and he's screaming to the person he's doing it to why he's doing it to them, which is not something anybody would do in that situation. It's like painfully obvious exposition for the audience, but that's neither here nor there. Still a great opening. When we're introduced to our main character, who was the Pink Ranger in the Mighty Mor Morphin Power Rangers movie, Naomi Scott, and she's really good in the movie. It's just the character that I have an issue with. Once we get there is when everything just goes to shit town with a bucket full of shit. This person is, it's impossible for me to feel sorry for them. Once you find out about this person's past and it's not the drug use or anything like that, it's, it's the, it's, there's other particular things I can't say, but there's a particular plot point in this. You're like, this person should be in jail. I cannot believe this movie spins like an hour of its running time on this Miley Cyrus, Britney Spears, woe is me, life is so hard as the pop star Hannah Montana, you don't understand type shit. I'm watching it, I know what I know about this character who just comes off as a whiny asshole to me. And I'm not saying what happens to them by the smile curse is not hard to watch for anybody to go through just as a human being, sure. They do a good job with the horror later on in the film at that point, but this is an over two hour long movie that just has no business doing that shit at all. An hour and a half tops. They need to take out all of this woe is me. It's so hard to be a rich pop star crap out of this movie. There's so many interactions this character has with people throughout the movie where I'm like, it's kind of an asshole. I just really, I really don't like this person. And it's, it's the movie really wants you to just feel so bad. And her performance is great. They do this annoying thing where they just keep like jarringly cut back to like some scream crying shit and some obnoxious ass just like, I mean, nose bubbles, Blair Witch, just full on freak out stuff. And it's pretty obnoxious, but I think she still did a great job with the role. It's just the character is so badly written, in my opinion, I just could not care less. And that is the rub when it comes down to it. That's the big point of this film. That or a lot of the characters, I just could not care for at all. And they were just kind of obnoxious and corny and people I don't want to spend two hours with, to be honest with you. The good parts in the movie aren't good enough to overcome some really obnoxious and corny moments. Specifically, one of the scenes that's in the trailer of all the people doing, the, you know, in the room, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that seems like it's going to be a, a giant moment in the film. I mean, just absolutely embarrassingly awful this scene was. I was laughing at it. It literally just takes what like 99.9% .9 of horror shorts on YouTube do and does it shittier. I mean, it was laughable. Like some red light, green light, one, two, three shit and just people making dumb faces. And it's already sort of silly with the face anyways. So you really gotta be careful with that. And this scene was dumb as fuck. I felt insulted intelligently. What the, the, and now I deserve it. See, that's why I'm, just, I'm an idiot and I'm gonna punch myself in the dick tonight. There were some good jump scares in the film. There's a ton of jump scares in the film, but it's really 50-50. Some are awful conjuring spinoff hokey ass jump scares and some are pretty good. I will say there's horror moments in this movie that go there that go hard. Some of the gore's good for sure. There's some meanness in it for sure. There's moments that make you kind of writhe around a little bit and make you wince that they really focus in on 
the torture part of it. And and for a movie that's again got this kind of bubblegum pop feel to it, you kind of appreciate that they still have the nuts to mix that in with it. And they do a good job of that. And also I'll say the very last part of this movie, like, and I'm not talking about the last act because the last act as a whole is just absolutely ridiculous at times and just completely steals the plot from other movies in just some wild ways. Like some some bad creepy pasta mixed with conjuring type shit mixed with literally taking the plot of another horror movie. I just didn't enjoy that at all. But where it leaves off of, the last few minutes of the movie gave me everything I wanted in this movie as a whole. Everything I thought this movie was going to be, I finally got to see some of in the last like 10 minutes tops of this movie. And I thought that's where the writing was good. That's where it was creative. Sure, is it sort of predictable that they would end up here? Yes. But just the angles of which they use the camera to portray this this moment and, and another moment that happens there just was really good. So it gives me hope for Smile 3 and where we go with the franchise. But this one to me, it was obnoxious. It was obnoxiously loud and corny at times for some reason. And I just really hated the main character. Again, not the actress. I think she's great. But the main character was just just really unlikable for me. All this horrible stuff's going on and the plot just wants to focus for 20 minutes on girly pop best friend slay shit. And I'm just like, I get like, it's fine. It just doesn't, with what you told us about this character, I could really give a shit. Like, I don't find this charming what you're showing us right now. And what I mean by corny and loud and over the top is like, there's like one scene in particular where two characters are screaming at each other in a car because they're high on cocaine. And the camera gets up in their nostrils and they're just like hardcore Henry screaming in its face. And the other one's like scream crying and being crazy and like pulling out their hair. And like, I'm like, I just, why? This is not fun for me. I feel like I'm backstage at a Jojo Siwa concert right now. It's just, it's not, it's just, I don't see why that's enjoyable. But again, once more, this is just my opinion. It's a five and a half out of 10 for me. I think that there is hope for the future of the franchise, but this is one I'll be going back to and fast forwarding through a lot of the story here because I just could not give a sharp shit about half the shit that was going on here. But that's me though. How do you guys feel about it? Comment down below. We'll be live Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern to watch some scary shit and do some fun stuff with each other's bungholes. That's not what I meant to say, but anything could happen here. Um, so tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday live. We're live at every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And I do want to say a quick shout out and thank you to everybody who came to the meetup this weekend. You guys made it so special and fun. I heard that Scarefest was a shit show for so many people with the lines and just the, the, the way it was ran and whatever. But all I know is that we had a great damn time. Uh, my liver and my body are still fully recovering from it. So, um, just absolutely warms my heart to meet so many of you guys and, and have you guys be so sweet and cool. And uh, thank you for coming to that. So we will talk to you guys soon. I love your fucking faces. And uh, fuck nuts buttercups. What are you going to do on October 31st? What are you going to do on October 31st? Here comes that white faced fucker. An asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits. Cause he's a white faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again. Sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said, God damn. God damn you, fighters. Ooh, I said, God damn. A lot of people don't know the darkness that goes inside their hearts. I said, God damn.